right, well, here we are. Two of us uh, met in Woodend for the ride for the day at a coffee shop. We decided to head on off to Soxes about quarter past nine. Terry's just telling me uh, it'd be embarrassing if I fell off a machine in front of the coffee shop before our ride started. Nice bloke, top guy. <laughs> so we're off, off and goffing. Off to Soxes and Amberley. It's gonna be a great day. Here we are at Soxes. Linda's come to see us off. Sorry, just to witness the fact that Sox left in case he um, pops his clogs. Get a nice car out of it. Right, leaving Sox's place, off on the adventure. Cannot wait. It's so good. Beautiful day, just stunning. So we're out in the Pyramid Valley, flying along the last bit of asphalt, and then we hit the shingle. Now this is getting to McDonald Downs, we're not even there yet. So we pull over, John points out the area that's going to be further up the road, that's going to be McDonald Downs. Stop for a quick check, make sure everything's okay. Bit of bullshit, bit of an adder. <laughs> Usual nonsense. I took a couple of quick photos. Terry's trying out my bike there. Let's see what he thinks. She says it's a bit taller than his. He's telling me he wants to buy it. I said no. <laughs> Just kidding. Couple of nice photos. Fantastic BMW GS there. And we're off. Off to McDonald Downs. Off for an adventure. Now this is in the property. We've gone past the driveway and everything. This is a proper McDonald Downs station. And it is stunning. It is such spectacular scenery. Beautiful, beautiful condition with the um, tracks, the farm trails there. Much better than the Lees Valley Road, really nice condition. But look at the scenery. This must be why they had the name the Pyramid Valley, I'm thinking. Maybe they saw these hills from a distance. Quite steep drop-off there. Don't want to be skidding off the edge of the track, that's for sure. That shingle road there to the right, it says it's off to Howarden. Might do that one day, let's see what's involved. Just loving this, absolutely loving it. Great weather, great track, great scenery. What more do you want? Look at that, every brow you come over, there's just a new beautiful panorama in front of you. Come over the crest here, and again, just breathtaking. I thought I've got to stop and have a look at this, this is gorgeous. Cam on the back of Sox's bike. And that's the owner up there, so that's me going through the water crossing. The Sox gets a bit sideways here, gets a bit of a squirrel on. Watch the back tyre, back wheel. Oh, jeez, that was close. Oh, and that's, I think it's Bill Patterson, I think his name is. He's the uh, owner of McDonald Down Station. He has a wee chat with John. <laughs> So I swapped the cameras over, put it on the back of Terry's BMW, that's me leaving the foreground there, and we're off again. At this stage we've got no idea what's ahead of us. Terry stands up, it's always a good way to stretch the legs and better control in certain circumstances. Coming up here on the right hand side is a signpost um, very shortly. It looks like it belongs in suburbia. Not that any of us had time to slow down and read it. But have a look here on the right hand side. See that? That's quite a few signs. <laughs> I've got it on the front of my bike. 
I think I'm following Mike. The road, the track is just stunning condition, so it's up the pace a wee bit. And here's Sox in the mighty V-Strom. Good looking bike. Shame about the rider. <laughs> Look at that scenery, eh? I keep going on about it, I know I do. But um, that's why we're there, it's just stunning. Just up here, to my surprise, was quite a decent little river crossing. Well, river, creek, stream, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, good old splash though. Then it was Terry's turn, and the uh, uncharacteristically hit it quite fast. Very impressive. I'm a lot happier on my front tyre than my back one. <laughs> <laughs> back one's like this all the time, you just, I'm just getting used to it. Yeah, your front tyre's awesome. Front tyre's fine. I'm using front brake now rather than back brake. <laughs> <It's easier. laughs> I might have to get a front tyre like yours. How'd you find that? Was, you attacked that pretty bloody hard, young man. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. You're the fastest of all of well, us. I was thinking the same thing. You're pretty brave. <laughs> How did you know we hadn't all stopped because there was a big hole? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it on camera when it came off. Did you see us all going, left side, left side? <laughs> <laughs> he, he thought, if I'm coming off, I'm going to land on dry land. <laughs> <laughs> what beautiful country. I oh, know, it's stunning, isn't it? So what would that be, John? Is that like a shearer's quarters, or what the hell? Is, where the hell are we? We're about halfway through the Channel Town. So what would that old house be? Oh, I don't know. It's got a garage. Yeah, that'll be that'll be. Well, when the winter when they muster and you've got four feet of snow out here, they'll come out here for a bloody two or three weeks mustering. Oh. Horses and everything will be out here. They muster with horses as well, still out here. Wow. Part of the deal, and you just don't see that often, eh? No. No. This looks a lot like a curtain. And then we lost the sound again. Thank you very much, GoPro, you buggers. That's a great expression. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying, but uh, it didn't impress them. So at this point, I got it in my head, and I don't know why, I can't explain why, that I needed to go through that river crossing again. Whether I thought it was good footage or the fact that I didn't capture it the first time, I honestly, looking back, can't think why the hell I did this. But I decided that I needed to get footage of going through it again. So I turn around and have another go at it. I wonder if it's just psychologically I'm just a big kid and I'm my new toy. And there was no real explanation, no real reason for it. So do a Yui. Little, often little bumps. Maybe that's it, just because I can. It's just because I've got the bike that can, so I wanted to do it. I don't know, I can't explain it. I don't think I went particularly fast. <laughs> I really can't explain this. Never mind, moving on. Yep. A Terry came up and told me that uh, I needed to <laughs> throw my blow dried here in the wind and socks is more eloquent. He just went up and said, poser. <laughs> so yeah, I was put in my place. No need for shenanigans like that, young man. And we're off. This concrete bridge before a gate made me laugh. I was saying to Mike how impressive it was. They must have put the wood across it and just poured concrete across the top of it. He's saying, well, uh, I hope it holds us. <laughs> I don't know why he's saying that while we're both sitting on it. You would think he would go off it and say that, but no, we're both sitting on it when he says, I hope it holds us. Another psychological question. Thank you, young Terry.
quite a bit of climbing up and down, a bit of height elevation. Coming along here, Mike stopped on the right hand side. We'll pull up to find out what's going on, and he's explaining that that's the Lees Valley in front of us there. Big expanse. And now we're heading down into the Lees Valley and we're in it proper. This is a flat. It's a very long, long flat area in the middle of the valley. Look at these cows, no fences, it's quite bizarre. You wouldn't want one to run out in front of you. And that is one of the amazing things about this ride, is uh, no fences along the roadside. Everywhere else you ride in New Zealand, there's fences. Here the livestock can just wander across the road anytime it likes. Now this is the uh, Kuku River. Here we go. It's been uh, talked about. Mike's gone and investigated it. He's had a look at both. And I've volunteered to go first. So I'm just coming back down from our recce point. This is the actual official crossing. This is where the four-wheel drive is. This is the actual main crossing. Mike's standing in the middle to help in case catch me, in case I do something stupid. Sox is coming up behind me, so I'm waiting for him to get off his bike. And I give it a go. And it steers like a forklift. The back wheel's um, spinning away, and I'm getting punted left and right. It's quite incredible how, uh, how the bike gets chucked around on such a slimy surface. But... I made it okay, much to my relief, wouldn't have been too happy if I'd dropped my new bike in the water, but that's life. And now it's my turn to uh, go stand in the river, and then there's two of us ready to catch in case anything goes wrong, not that it will. But it it's, makes you feel a lot safer when there's two people standing there that can help you if you get a bit wobble on. Some of these, these bikes can be quite heavy if you get them over on a 45 degree angle. Water wasn't too cold. All our boots are filled up with water. And here comes John. No problem at all, the mighty V-Strom. Look at that. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Oh, spoke too soon. Oh, he's in. He's gone in. His bike's in and he's gone in. Jesus, the front wheel's underwater. Look at that. He's beside me. He stood up. It's three of us. Mike's pulling from the other side. Me and the socks are hard as we can, pushing the damn thing back up. Oh, now we're starting to laugh. <laughs> now, now I wish that microphone had worked. That was so funny. Now we're all laughing. Poor bugger. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, dear. Soaked. Absolutely soaked. Now we're going to get the bike out, but uh, it's a good bike. Starts first time. <laughs> Someone said something hilarious. We, we were all laughing. He's like, look at his welding gloves. Poor old socks with welding gloves. Not waterproof, that's for sure. But he throws his leg over. She fires up first time. No problem at all. I think I'll replay that in a second. And we'll see. I clearly reckon his front wheel hits a boulder and it stops him. I don't think he recalls that. But I think it's definitely what happened. Let's have another look. So here he is, he's entering well, everything's going well, it's riding nicely, ploughing through the water, you watch in a second, yeah, yeah, you watch that front wheel, it stops definitely, see he hits something there, and it's through the bike backwards a little bit, just enough, and then once the weight's over 45 degrees, he's got a bad right ankle anyway, he wasn't going to try and snap his ankle, so he reckons he'd let it go, <laughs> give him the benefit of the doubt, <laughs> that's not funny, I'm sorry I'm not laughing, <laughs> So can you imagine how these guys feel after that, after seeing that, how confident they are? Yeah, they really want to cross this now. It doesn't look that deep, doesn't look that hard, so we get a four-wheel drive, comes along and he shows us how it's supposed to be done. That's the way, fellas. Four wheels, up to the sills, but not a problem. That's how you do it. Well, that's inspiring. So I walk back into place. There's going to be two catches. Mike's on the big BMW GS 1200, 1250, I think. Look at that, straight as a die. 
problem free. You see the back wheels on all these bikes are, um, they just hit boulders and they just bump sideways like a forklift. It's quite disconcerting because you think you're going really well and then the next thing you're pointing in a different direction. Uh, it's Terry's turn. I've been looking around to see if there's any big boulders in the way. I kicked a few out. Here comes, here comes the caveman. Look at it. Looks like a geriatric line dancer. Look at the bloody water. It's like he's got 45 degree water on him. <laughs> oh, he looks like caveman wrestler from the World Wrestling Federation. He can't even stand straight. Look at him. He can't even walk in the bloody thing. How do you get his bike across there? Right, here comes Terry. Look at that. Something about these BMWs, eh? Maybe me and John are riding the wrong bikes. Oh, he made it look easy. Oh, no, and then he makes the, he makes the easy bit look hard. The bit where you come out of the water onto the dry bit, he gets stuck on. He gets through the water, no problem at all, and now we're stuck <laughs> on the exit ramp. Well, the boys sort him out. Stalls it a couple of times, but no biggie. And we're off. We've made it. We're across the damn Okuku River. And that's something to be proud of. Do you yeah. bike? Yes. Hey, we, we have damage. You have damage your cheese sandwich? Well, I bike the fucking bike. <laughs> 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 oh, <no. laughs> Safer. <laughs> 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 you stop for a bike too, sir? Yeah, mate, why not? Why what do you reckon? Yeah. Mate, what an adventure. So for the record, John, for the people who are going to be watching this at home, I'm going to get an intimate interview with John Crichton and how he feels about that. No, it's not John Crichton, it's Fred, Fred someone. <laughs> are we calling it an incident? What are we calling it? The, the, getting, event, the I, event. I was getting very hot and then it's all off. <laughs> We're calling it the event. John, can you wave? John, I've got a feeling there's one person that's going to enjoy that more than anyone. Can you give Simon a wave? <laughs> <laughs> it was just for you, Si. Yeah. So after this, I wanted to see if I had ABS or uh, a traction control. I had to go at the traction control, but my wheels spun, and I had to go at ABS, and it's definitely very good. It won't let me lock the wheels up. And so then I wanted to turn the bike around, and I thought I'd go for a wee play. But... Um, Turning it around without getting a thorn in the tyre was proven to be quite tricky, so uh, I went a bit off-road, had a bit of fun, brought me back to trail biking days. Really enjoyed this bit, stupid really. I think again, it's just being a big kid and I'm on the bike that can do it, so I had to do it. I don't know why, I really can't explain why I had to do that. Just playing, I guess. Well, what the hell, we're four big overground boys playing on our toys, aren't we, at the end of the day? And we're off, and we've left. We had something to eat, and we've left. And right now we're back into it. And what do we get? Another bloody water crossing and a gate. You wouldn't believe it. Feels like we're three feet from the river. John really needs more water. That's exactly what he needs. Good bow wave on the v strong Terry gets a wobble on, but he's good as gold. We get through there and straight into a gate. Now it's about now you're going to find out I did something really stupid. I figure it's my turn to shut the gate so I pull over and I put my side stand on possibly the stupidest angle I ever could. Right on the grass at the edge of the road with the bike pointing downhill. Now you probably can't park a bike any worse than that. It's probably as dumb as you get. But that's me. So you'll see when I go back to get back on my bike the side stand gives way as I throw my leg over it and I go for a tumble. Watch this for stupid. 
throw my leg over. What the hell's happening? <laughs> what a moron. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that uh, my pride took a wee dent then. The bike was fine. Second time the bike fell over that day. John helps me get it up. We're all good. Turn her off for 20 seconds, turn her back on. She's all good. Fix the mirror. Start her up. Yay, and we're off. Now watch this. John can't wait to tell someone that I've fallen off my bike again. That was the second time during this trip. <laughs> I haven't got a video of the first one. Look at this. He can't help himself. Look. <laughs> I'm denying it. I'm fervently denying it. It never happened. No one saw it. It didn't happen. Another gate to close. Start at the bikes and we're off again. Now look to your left in a minute. There's a bull. I swear, a bull. Its horns are cut shorter, but they're out there and it's got no fence between us. We're just riding along as a little puddle and look at the left there. No fence. It's a friggin' bull with horns. Jesus Christ, thank God its tails are wagging. I hope that means the same as a dog. <laughs> and our next wildlife encounter is a, uh, a mother cow and a calf uh, who gets frightened by the bikes and then start galloping along the road in front of us. Poor old Mike's got <laughs> probably about, what, a tonne and a half of bloody uh, cow, mad cow with its um, calf running in front of him and he's threatening to bolt in front of him any minute. This went on for quite a while. The boys were very careful, nice and slow, not to scare them too much. I came up beside uh, Terry to get a shot, but then they, the cow ducked off to the right and went back off into the fields. So that's quite nice. No harm to anyone. No distressed cows. See them all there on the right, hiding in the bushes. Sneaky cows. And then another cool water splash. Just a puddle, really. Enough to get the water up over my glasses, though. It's big country out here. Look at these cows, right beside the road, no fences. And Terry's about to go through a water splash and his engine cuts out. And back wheel locks up, watch this. Goes through, splash, big skid, back wheel locked up. Conked out completely. No, I got soaked. That went right over me. Terry's wondering what the hell has happened to his bike. Turns out he's just in too high a gear and it just stalled. Everything's all fine and we're off again, no problem at all. Turned out to be quite an adventurous ride though. This is real fun. This is beautiful country, riding along, not worrying about a cop with a radar gun around the corner. This is lovely. This is riding. I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of this. We come across some four-wheel drivers who were obviously out for a bit of a bit of fun, a bit of play, and they um, very kindly opened the gate for us, which is nice. Maybe letting the old uh, car cool down a bit. Friendly wave and a nod. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. One less gate to open. Look at the valley in front of us. Look at the view. Riding, riding conditions like that just takes your breath away. We stand up on the foot pegs, have a good look around. Again, I don't know where we are. I wouldn't have a clue. We could have been in Kaikoura for all I knew. Uh, just amazing. Just great look scenery. Beautiful track. Lots of fun. 
John's back wheel here, I think I remember. Yeah, look at that. See that? Whew, that got a bit squirrely. I'll show you that again. That is bloody well. Hang on to this. Look, here we go. You can see slow motion. Look at that back sliding around. I've been complaining about that back tyre. I bet that'll be getting replaced. Nicely done. Here comes Terry in the BMW 800. Nice shot of him. Enjoying the countryside, and I'm off in hot pursuit like a bloody cop who's going to give him a ticket. Again, I have no idea where we are. But it's long and it was dusty, and I'm imagining it was about the middle of the Lees Valley or towards the end. Decent water splash again. I think there was a chicken root off the left hand side and the boys are waiting to see if anyone would take it. And now we're off on a long dusty trail. Everyone actually spread out quite a long way so you can see what the hell you were doing. Now anyway, there's the last of the flat bit here, we're coming up to a Amazing bridge, nice. Um, I think it's over the Ashley River. I think it was long concrete banana-shaped bridge. After miles and miles of dusty road, you just come through these trees, and next thing there it is. Very pretty. And then Mike had stopped there on the bridge. Change his batteries on his GoPro. And I took the opportunity to stop and do the same. We pulled over in case any traffic wanted to go by. Mike's changing his batteries here on the GoPro. I'll walk up for a good old look around. Then we decided to take a couple of photos. I'll show you what they look like actually. Quite nice photos. Here you go taking it and here's the result quite nice so you yell at everyone put your hands up give us a wave there you go nice photo eh? and if we pan out the panoramic one I took you'll see that um, it's quite nice might be even further good photo quite pleased with that Did a few more photos just on the bridge just having a chat a yak no traffic so you know what does it matter Sox's bike, V-Strom, they're all getting the duty, so I hand socks my phone and say, right, can you uh, get a photo of me? And I'm a bit close to the rail, they're not very comfortable, I'm very careful not to tip over. He takes a pretty good photo, see, there, that's it, nice photo, isn't it? Then uh, I tell him to move over, go on, get over there, get over there, put your bloody told or I'll put your old people home. No, oh, look at him, look, uh, pose for me. He takes another good photo, so yeah, I'll let him away with that. Yep, that'll do. Well done, Socks. No old people's home for you. Oh, he didn't hear me. He's grinning. Oh, what's that noise? Oh, shit. Traffic. <laughs> We've actually got traffic. Off the bridge, boys. Get off. Get off the bridge. It's not, a, it's not a mini. It's not a Nissan March. What is it? Well, it's quite wide, and it probably needs us off the bridge. See it there? That is not a small truck with a small load. It's a big truck with a big load. And he's very kindly stopped. For us to get off the damn bridge and we do it as fast as we can. It's the last thing a guy needs is a bunch of townies having a coffee and a natter in the middle of a bloody public bridge. Nice guy, give him a toot and a wave, thank you very much. And we're off again. Now we're in, from going from uh, a long flat shingle road with lots of dust, suddenly we're heading uphill.
quite steep. People are always saying that GoPros don't show how steep it is, but you can see that we're constantly climbing there, climbing up the valley. It's probably got some name. I think it's just the Lees Valley Road, but it's probably some sort of pass. There's quite a lot of like volcanic rock under the road. You can see there that uh, the shingle has been worn through and it's quite bumpy in places, quite exposed. A bit like the Rapaki track in some places. You can see here, I'm quite impressed with how dirty my bike is. Looking down at myself, I can't believe it. <laughs> and here the road gets quite rough. Uh, nothing terrible, nothing we can't handle, but uh, you'll see there it's not exactly designed for the old uh, family saloon. She's definitely a little bit rugged there. See Socks' bike bouncing around and the old back tyre that he doesn't like. change in scenery is quite dramatic. Look at this. I think they told me this was beach forest. I'm not sure. I wouldn't know what a beach tree looks like, but uh, very, very pretty. From one extreme to the other, constant scenery changes. No one's playing heroes around the corners. A lot of shingle. No need to come off. No heroics around the corners. And as you're about to see, I was very impressed with my uh, $99 Navman. The one sitting in front of me there, it's showing me the route the whole way. I'm pointing to it there going, I can't believe this. I can. It's never lost track. It's never put me in the middle of a paddock. It's known where I am at all times, which to me is invaluable because I have the sense of direction of a, well, I don't know. I can't think of a single living being that's got a worse sense of direction than me, so I'll leave it here. 15K corners. Up here, Mike's pulled over on a bridge. If you look over his left shoulder, you see the reason there's a waterfall. Beautiful waterfall, which uh, apparently a lot of people from town come on their four wheel drives to have a picnic by or whatever. So if you look past Mike here, see the back distance here, that waterfall? Bloody beautiful. Really pretty area. Very, very pretty. So we left the waterfall. I took off in the lead, had a bit of fun, it was a nice bit of track, nice bit of road. A little bit of speed up, climbing up the hill to the pass to try and get a nice shot of the boys coming up. That was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And just up here I spotted a uh, nice lay-by viewing point, whatever you want to call it and it had spectacular views in both directions. There, as you can see, across town, and the other side is the uh, the river, the valley. Here they come. That's Terry first, then Mike, and John follows up the rear. And it is beautiful country. Uh, you can't say it too often. I mean, you can see it for yourself, look at it. Just making his interviews. And if it wasn't for my stupid GoPro microphone failing, you'd have heard all about it. So now the final leg, up and out of the valley. And it starts to rain. I couldn't believe it. Look at that Honda Odyssey going the other way. What a twat. It can't be right. What a silly car to take there. Look at that rain. Couldn't believe it. Still, it must be 25, 26 degrees. No real clouds in the sky that look like rain. You almost wonder where it's coming from. Get all the jackets, some events open. <laughs> so, oh, am I in trouble here? But uh, it didn't last too long.
another beautiful ridge, another place to stop for catch up. This place is full of lovely spots. Look at that, majestic. Just wait for the other two guys. Catch up, make sure everything's okay, and then head off to the pub. It's beer time. And that's pretty much the last part of the track, heading right down to the flat. You'll see a couple of corners, and we've got the last little bit onto the Tarsil main road again. And just like that, back to civilization. I tell you what, when we turned here and went up to 100 kilometers an hour, it felt like we were doing supersonic speeds. I got to 90 and I thought I was flying. It was. It had been so long that we'd been doing 60 and 70 that 100 kilometers an hour just felt like it was uh, a space shuttle. Now we're looking for the pub. We're following Mike. Mike's taking us to the pub for a drink. We don't know where he's going. But he did, so all we do is follow that man to get a beer. And there it is, the watering hole. Obviously biker friendly, a few bikes here already, and these uh, Harleys all turned up at the same time. We must have been quite a sight compared to them. They're all shiny and clean and black and chrome, and we are filthy. We are covered in dust. But it was fantastic, had lovely catch up, beer and chips look at Sox's bum <laughs> so a fantastic ride with a great bunch of guys finished off with a beer what a great weekend thanks guys we'll do that again soon